Welcome to a new test and teardown video. We are still playing around with a lot of homebrew equipment. And look at this. Everything is just homemade. So I found those three boxes here and I found them really uh, interesting to, uh, to open and uh, play around with. So I think we're going to do that. Just going to start with this one. And here, look at the look at the case. Normally, you would use the like the main part here, and then you would would build into that one, right? But look what he did. He used the lid and mounted everything in the lid. So that means when you take it apart, you have everything in one complete unit. I mean. This is just so much smarter. And now I've been playing around with electronics for 40 years and this is only now I realize this is a much better way to do it. <laughs> I think that's actually quite funny. But this is this is just a lot better. This is definitely the way to do it. So what is this box? This is a um a video model uh, yeah. So TV TV modulator, it's doing uh, channel 2, so that is 50 megahertz. And it is very, very simple. Let's uh, put it that way. This way it follows the text. And what have we got here? So this is the crystal, it's probably around 50 megahertz, just under. And then there is an NPN transistor, a uh, 5 volt regulator, and as far as I see, the 5 volt goes to a pot where you set the voltage and the, I don't know, maybe the, the point of operation for, for the oscillator as well as the modulation input comes here, right? And it goes also to a little trimmer. And then there is a capacitor, so it's only AC that is fed into the supply. So this is AM modulation. So it goes straight into the uh, into the supply. I looked up this transistor and the so this is actually my writing here. So you can see the collector in emitter and this is the base that is uh, connected to the to the crystal uh, like that so this is the oscillator so I think we should uh, try and power this up and see if it works I've been playing a little bit with this TV modulator here and it was actually working for a short period of time and now it stopped working and I think it was uh, the regulator that actually stopped working so I changed the regulator and now I got 5 volts and all that kind of stuff, but I don't get any output anymore. So I, I don't know what happened, but it's just totally dead. And I got all the correct uh, DC uh, operating points here. And if I touch the crystal here a little bit, then I get some kind of signal out of it. So I mean, it's very, very close to oscillating, but it's just not happening. So that is just bad luck. See, I saw November 64 written on the back side of the crystal. And the, the regulator, I think this one means 85, right? No, 83, sorry. Yeah, 83. I wrote it down here so, so I wouldn't say it wrong because it's difficult to read. So, yeah, I think this, uh, this thing, this TV modulator was built uh, in the 80s and... I just uh, happened to actually see it for a few seconds. I did see a 50 megahertz carrier and then I was trying to put in some modulation and then suddenly just stopped working. I don't know. That was uh, sad. Let's, let's play with the next one then. This one looks a lot more interesting. Let's look at the outside. There is actually a lot of explain here. So the power supply is 12.5 volts 
analyzer and 432 megahertz input 75 db is what and then uhf converter so remember the spectrum analyzer i released a video about a few days ago that one was a 0 to 200 megahertz uh, spectrum analyzer so if you want to uh, look at frequencies over that of course you need to down convert so he's been he's been using uh, this down converter to look at 432 megahertz so inside here what i believe we got here is this is the oscillator so there's an oscillator and then a buffer and a filter and look at that here in the middle this is a mixer and it is of course self-made just like everything else and it's just instead of buying one of those SBL uh, mixers or standard components no no it's more fun to make it yourself I, I mean that is definitely impressive and then the output goes again to a, another driver and then some sort of a filter here I think this is the DC injection and the impedance match for the output and there's also a low pass that inductor and those capacitors and also look at that little trick this wide wide track here this one this is of course to generate good ground for the output that's definitely important so I think we should try and uh, boot this up and see if it works so it must be a down converter that is what I think we we should expect Wow this actually works I input 432 um, megahertz exactly as it say uh, on the top plate here so let's look at this is the output and this is 66 megahertz and let's see if yeah oh yeah look what happens is this me i'm trying to move this thing a little bit around and see i think this is the oscillator right so of course if i touch this see what happens on the output let me see if i can let me see if i can show you guys this at the same time let me just grab it like this see this will detune the oscillation frequency oh yeah here we can go so yeah this is definitely a front end for his uh fantastic spectrum analyzer a down converter and homemade mixer that is absolutely fantastic let me see the the frequency range this will handle as you can see here there is no front end uh, filters on the input and also on the output all you see here is like a low pass right so that means any frequencies under the pass frequencies here they will just go straight through and this is the same thing with the input so what i'm playing with here is actually 20 megahertz of input and see what happens here so this is 20 30 40 50 so so this is my input that goes straight through right let's see peak uh, no yes it is yeah this is my input so now I'm at, uh, at 100 megahertz so then I go up to 200 and now you see can you see this one so this is my input and this is the output from the mixer so look what happens here 200 and 50 see here here we collide and then we go the other way again so that is now 300 peak and this is the output that is now 200 and then when I go up in frequency 
the output of this converter of course goes down. So now that is 400 and the peak is about 100 out. And then we go back to yeah the 430 and this is what it is supposed to be 68. So when the frequency goes up to 300, uh, 440 and 430 see this one is like inverted but this is not a problem for the spectrum analyzer as long as you know what you're doing so that is actually quite funny but it's a very useful uh, down converter now you can measure frequencies uh, way over its normal operating area so this is the last box in this video and this is a UHF doppler. So the input frequency is 216 and the output is 432. And this is very very beautiful. Now everything here is made the other way around. See we got a lot of components on the back side as well, right? We got all the tracks on the back side, all the connections between all the components, they're on the back side of this PCB. And you gotta see this. So this is the input. That is a very, very, very cool detail. This is for proper impedance, proper input match. So this is a coaxial feeder just made in air like that instead of having a little coax cable it can also be done like this and I bet the distances and the width of all this gives you 50 ohms and it's the same trick with the output see the width of the of the ground all the way around here this gives you a better impedance match and as, I, as far as I can see here yeah we got a little amplifier and if I look through this hole let me see if I can show you guys this see that is better see there's a little coil in here so that's definitely a filter I don't see any voltage regulators or anything here, so it's probably non-regulated uh, circuit. But anything, th this shouldn't, par uh, you know, affect the way that this uh, system works because we got only amplification and then a filter, and then a mixer. And this mixer is uh, a half balanced mixer, I guess, because we got only uh, two diodes. But it's it's not coupled as a mixer, but it's coupled as a doppler. Because you can you can do that uh, with mixers, and then he figured, hey, I only need the two diodes to do the frequency doubling mode, and uh, that is definitely what we got here, a frequency doubler, and then it goes through a filter and then out. So, oh yeah, and those um, diodes, by the way, and uh, that's the same as in this one. Uh, they are HP2835 uh, UHF Shockey diodes. So they are very, very fast. And if you look up the data sheet, it will say uh, UHF uh, mixer diodes and stuff like that. So they're definitely uh, chosen to, uh, to handle this job. So yeah, let's see if this works. So now I'm playing with the Doppler. I got 216 megahertz input and of course I got exactly 432 output so it really works and uh, I have a span that is actually also covering the input see starting at 200 megahertz so I don't see any input on the output so let's try and uh, dial a few megahertz down and then it's gone so that is 210. Let's go back to 216 here. 
and then 17, 18, 19, 20. 21. 221, and it's totally gone. So that is a very effective uh, input and output filter. I also tried to input 432, and it goes not straight through, but there is a... Yeah, let's, let's just see this. So this is the same input, and let's just go to from 216 to 432 megahertz. See, this is what happens on the output. So, so this is of course the the input filter is not um, super super effective, but of course it is uh, what 25 dB or something. So yeah, it is clearly something. And again. You see the coating, a thick layer of coating. So yeah, that was a beautiful Doppler. Maybe this is used for the transverter project. I am also going to cover, so maybe you want to see that one as well. So thank you for watching. Bye bye.